Hello class, this is the week four um, follow up video after our second class yesterday on Thursday, I want to just check in with all of you and give you kind of a rebrief of what we talked about in class. Um, to make sure that you're now ready to go from the research phase of your rebrand project and now begin to take on the design or, or redesign of your brand, um, we spent a, a good solid set of weeks understanding about what your brand is about, sharing in uh, the research of the audience and competitors and strategy for what the brand your brand has been doing, and then taking a thoughtful look at how that strategy could either be improved on or radically shifted or just simply committed to in a stronger way. Um, and everyone presented really great uh, research decks and concept decks that included two or three concept statements and had uh, inspiration for how to, uh, how to visualize your concept in a mood board and then design inspiration on, on showing uh, design tools or design strategies or design techniques on how those concepts and how the strategy elements could be realized in a visual form. So with all that being done, now it's time to break out the blank sheet of paper and begin to uh, look at how you can be in your, begin your process. Now, remember when you're designing, you're gonna be designing, uh, you're telling the story, you're trying to fulfill some goals and you want to be able to take uh, what is something that is etched in people's minds and also in their hearts in terms of the brand that's out in the public, a brand that's owned by people in their own minds and their own hearts. And you wanna to begin to now respectfully and reverently shift it into something new. So that what that means is in, the, in your process, you wanna make sure you have rationale for what you're doing and that you're creating visuals that execute on that, on that rationale and on that strategy and that you're evolving your design, you're being respectful to the equities and the successes that they've built uh, over years and years uh, to then create something that's new, that is more effective, but isn't just new for the sake of, sake of being new. It's not just different in order to kind of please your own personal sensibilities, but it's different in you in order to achieve a specific goal. And that's just very important. And I recommend that you begin even for your own process by making small changes, beginning to look at it, fine tune, adjust, adapt. Um, and then from there, go more and more aggressive and more and more radical for how you might wanna change your, your look and feel. Um, and for the next week, we're gonna be spending time doing that, facing that challenge. Um, I'm gonna rely on each of you to take responsibility, manage your time, spend, dedicate yourself to this, um, be able to really focus in on what you wanna do, put the time into it. And I wanna remind you, as I did in the beginning of the class, that the projects we're doing here are gonna be important and should be vital to your portfolio and your, to the presentation of the work you do. This project included, I know I said earlier that it doesn't matter if this looks good or bad and that's still true. Um, I want you to learn the process. Uh, I feel everyone's doing a great job of that. And now is the time to really take advantage of what we're learning by creating something aesthetically well done that shows your mastery and design. So if each of you could really take that on, take that responsibility, confront it and be able to put the time in that you need uh, along with me collaborating with you so that we can really make these rebrands at the highest level uh, and, and more importantly, connect to a story, connect to a strategy that when you're presenting them, uh, whether they're the right direction to go or not, they will make sense and they will be uh, founded on something that has a foundation. Um, so please do that. I know we all have it in us to do this and I want, I want to get greatness out of each of you. Um, so I want to just go back and repeat what I showed in class uh, and give a more in-depth talk about it. So this is the, the Barbie rebranding project that a student did last year. And I just quickly kind of showed you how uh, this student went from the same kind of idea. There are, there are the research por portions of this deck, which I'll show you in the full deck that's going to come after this. But this right here represents the assignment you just did. And uh, like you, there were there were different concepts that had names, that had themes. They were supported by mood boards that were focused in on edited 
edited in a way where they try to tell the story, they try to give this kind of like more human perspective, this more emotional point of view, something that you your client can look at and say, yeah, this is the direction we want to take our brand in towards. And then from there, we get practical and begin to show uh, techniques that can take the idea of being timeless and simple and then show how typography, color, shape, form uh, can all come together uh, if curated properly into like a new look and feel. Um, and in this new board, in this board, I think there was a kind of a challenge to the to the pink of Barbie that we're gonna see how that that plays out in the end. But that that sort of became one of the first things that was thought of as a good idea. Um, and then from here now we end up becoming we end up getting uh, results in in design form. And in this case, it was about just typography in a simple way. It wasn't about like creating something new or something that was uh, outside of what might be um, kind of accessible to, to anybody. So it was, it was nice, plain and simple, a little dynamic with the angle. And again, it was again, it was going against the idea of the color pink. Um, and then here it gets a little more complex, trying to take some of the inspiration from what we saw here and build on this overlapping vector idea to create an A in a special way. Um, modern trendy was the second concept, again, built on mood boards that gave us tools and gave us a vision. Um, and then, following the same idea, like the same thought process as the first concept. Um, and that's okay. Like if your concepts have similarities and overlap, they should. It's not that everyone is a completely different thing. Think of them as members of a family. Your concepts are members of the family that they're, they're not necessarily that different, but they have unique attributes. Um, so here you're kind of seeing the exploration of what color could look like within more of a gradient or within a locked up shape. And we're staying again with kind of traditional simplified techniques, which is the strategy. It's um, part of what this designer wanted to do. And the result in a black and white way also came in this way, a second one uh, that was a little more, again, around the idea of what we saw in some of these inspirations and kind of building on the idea of, of the typography following a certain methodology. And then the third one, and this one was three. And again, if we have two, that's okay. This one has three. Boundless creativity, which is kind of a great, a great name, showing the um, inspiration and uh, design direction, ty typographic, uh, illustrative techniques. Um, and here, I, I, and I'm not calling this ugly, but here's where <laughs> uh, you, this idea that you're going to try doing things and they might look, not look right, and they may not be, they may have, you may have thought of it in one way when you look here and you thought it was a good idea. And then when you did it, it didn't quite look like what you wanted it to, or even your ability to make it look right wasn't proper. That's okay. And the, this, this didn't end up becoming part of what the final presentation was, but it was needed for this designer to be able to make something like this, to make something so radical that just scribbles on the word Barbie in order to really see clearly towards what the vision would be. So, um, or even this kind of like really brutal rough kind of point of view that really tries to take the masculinity uh, angle in a, in a hard, deep way. That exploration was needed for this designer and also the lack, the abandonment of pink was needed um, as we'll see in terms of uh, what really is a good idea for this brand. So here's more of a techie, a techie kind of approach or a sort of retro video game kind of look and feel or, or low technology. Um, and I think what will be important for you to do too for each of you, I don't think I said this before, but let's make, let's make uh, a, a, a gridded, page like this that kind of shows like the, the first round of ideas, like curate this so that you get, when you start putting them together, you can start comparing and seeing how they're working and what's good about this. And that, and that was, uh, that was what should be the end of your first week. Um, and, uh, and again, I want that to be the goal. If it take, if it's, if you don't, if you have only three and not six, like don't take this literally, if you have 12, that's okay too. It just kind of depends on what you're working on. But here we were able to really take a step back and look at this and decide that there were some things that were going on that just didn't make sense. As mice, as great as it sounded like we should get rid of the pink, it's not a good idea. We can see the pink is vital because it's, it's, it's really missed here. Um, as much as we thought maybe going really strong on the masculinity was a good idea, we could see it's an overreach. Um, some things that are going on in terms of the type, like over here and over here, uh, seem to be in the right idea. Trying to do too much with a logo, like we see in this little fanny symbol, we can kind of see that it's, it's, it's working too hard unnecessarily. So this gave, this first round then gave a chance for the student to respond 
and to refine and to um, and to kind of get these things off their off of their chest and be able to say, okay, now that I've tried this, I can see where I need to go. So be open to your ideas not being as great as you thought they were. Or that sounds smart, but I don't mean it that way. Be open to them not being as successful as you thought they would be. Um, and then use that as a learning tool. So what I want to do now is show you uh, what the result was uh, two or three weeks later in the, in the final presentation that then give, can give you a look at how this designer responded to their initial logo developments and created um, a presentation that ended up being really effective. So, and this is a little preview of what you're going to be doing for your final uh, in a few weeks, but basically we're going to bring together the full uh, deck idea with the first week's uh, research, talking about the target, target market, the competitors, the history of the company, what the current personality is, uh, building on the idea of what this new personality for the vision of the company or the brand could be for Barbie. Uh, and then again, expressing the new strategy in a clear way with support, vi supported visuals, and then going into the three concepts. So here we're gonna go into the three concepts in the same way we just did. You might find that your mood boards will be adjusted as you work on this, and that's uh, encouraged and okay. Um, and here we see that, that the designer went back to Barbie and they could see that just by, went back to pink and they could see that by putting that pink in there, suddenly it gave much more, much more forgiveness or much more leverage to do things that are new because the pink really held the legacy in place. And so keep that in mind with the way you use color or even typography, like certain things, you should keep them because they end up giving you more flexibility, not less flexibility. Um, and then it became the idea of like kind of creating these touch points, which is going to be next week's assignment to create a small set of touch points that showcase what the idea looks like. Um, and then here we see um, the second concept, which is modern trendy. And the response again was similar going, if we bring in the color to this idea, this typographic idea, we end up with a, with a strong new look to Barbie that, that ends up still retaining the values of the current and the past Barbie, just simply by keeping pink, by keeping pink and, and almost declaring that pink isn't just feminine. I personally love pink. So pink could be um, a color for uh, like a, a gender neutral color uh, that, that can represent more than just uh, classic femininity. Uh, and again, the, the touch points is for next, for next week's assignment. Um, and then progressive, I guess that's a, a different name. Um, and the, this is where the more of the radical change came in terms of the approach and progressive really was about like saying, let me, let me embrace where you've been, but let's take a 21st century look at how to express Barbie and, and minimize it in a way that connected with the, uh, the way technology allows us to, to, to speak and communicate differently and to condense it in a, in a short way that really kind of spoke to the strength of the brand, that the brand is so strong, the brand identity is so strong that we can take away, deconstruct several letters and still get this, uh, this little uh, smaller version that spoke just as loudly as the bigger version, if not loudly, louder. And then that also allowed it to become more of an inclusive brand because it no longer became this kind of 70s girl's name. It became kind of like a BRB or Barbie, depending on how you want to say it, giving more ownership and more agency to the person who really is the owner of the brand, all of us, each of us individually, we can then respond to this brand in a strong way. So here we see uh, the brand ex ex uh, expressed in familiar uh, touch points, but using this new logo. And since this is the one that um, the student felt was the best, they saved it for the third one. And then they used that as the final week of the assignment to create even more touch points. And even here, you can see that the idea of giving up the pink was not fully was not fully surrendered that as a primary color, pink could become still the primary color, but we could expand to other colors outside of the pink, um, which we see here nice, nicely done and really nicely executed in terms of mock-ups. Just the wrinkles are, are, are perfect because it looks, it looks so real this way. Um, and then again, the idea of bringing all the ideas into one and really having this really strong, exciting conversation at the end to kind of debate uh, and talk about what, which, uh, which of these directions is indeed the strongest. And of course, the thank you that we have to make sure we always have. So that's, that'll give you uh, hopefully some inspiration, some permission to go into like sucky land. If you're like doing something and it doesn't look so good, it's okay. Suckiness leads to greatness. 
only if you keep going. If you stop at sucky, you stay at sucky. So remember, it's gonna be about you having tenacity, having courage, uh, pushing yourself, asking for help when you're stuck, getting feedback. I'm gonna be here for that. I wanna, I wanna help guide you. This is a collaborative process and we're gonna end up making uh, these brands together uh, in a great way. So just a quick reminder for um, the class that make sure you are working on your logo redesign and that you check out that Reader's Digest rebranding video. If you didn't see the one last week for Rogaine, look at that too. These are important things for you to listen to and, and um, learn about. If you don't know where they are, text me or uh, Slack me or email me and I'll send you the links. And then of course, we got our topic series going on of digital design systems. Make sure you're watching those videos if you haven't yet and make sure you do the assignments. Uh, I'll do next week so that there's like, if you get stuck and you're like, don't want to work on this, work on the, on the, on the topic lecture series number four, um, digital design systems. Okay, so again, this, looks, this makes it look so easy, but we're, we're, our goal is to have three, two to three new designs that reflect on your concepts um, and add to them. Okay, so that's it for now. If anyone has any questions, let me know. I will be sending out an email on a Slack probably over the weekend that will have the schedule. If you have a preference to um, any specific uh, date for uh, when you want day of the week um, that you wanna have your one-on-one -on -one meeting, let me know. We're gonna stick to the idea of having a work week with one-on-one -on -one meetings once in the, in the week, either Tuesday or Thursday. If you choose, if you wanna do Tuesday, Tuesday we're gonna have seven meetings Thursday, we're gonna have eight. So if you do Tuesday, you get a few, you get a minute or two more of time because it's, it gets divided less. Um, I'm gonna pick who goes when, but, I'm, but if you wanna be a Tuesday person for sure, or a Thursday person for sure, just email me. And as long as it first come first serve kind of thing, as long as we're not all filled up on one day, you'll get that day. And if you even can wanna say, can I do first thing Tuesday? Can I do first thing Thursday? Can I do last thing Thursday? Can I do? I don't wanna to get too specific because I, can, I can't honor everyone's request if we start getting double requests, but no one's requesting anything very specific so far. So the doors are wide open. So email me if you need, and then I'll put you in a, a session. I'm also gonna be in class both days and each of you, uh, it's gonna, this is gonna be an in-class meeting. And if you want it to be a Zoom meeting uh, online, then I'll put that in your hands and all you have to do is email me in advance um, or Slack me, or even if you don't in advance, I'll, I'll have the Zoom meeting open. And if you show up there instead of into the classroom, that's in your hands, but I want the classroom to be open for you both days to come in and work if you want and to come in to meet with me. Um, all right, everyone. So no partying this weekend. You're gonna work on your, your logos. You're gonna work hard. You're gonna be afraid. And then you're gonna be excited all rolled up into one. And I look forward to talking to you and seeing where you're at. For your meetings, don't feel like you have to be completely done, particularly if you're on Tuesday. Um, give me space to give you feedback and we're gonna get uh, some great results. Thanks everybody. And we will see you on Tuesday or Thursday.